In this lesson, we're going to learn how to model using exponential functions. Remember, modeling is simply the process of using mathematics to represent a scenario. And in this case, we'll look at scenarios that are exponential in nature. We know that an exponential function is a function whose exponent is a variable. An exponential function has the form y equals a times b to the x, where a is the initial amount, or the y-intercept, and b is the factor, or the multiplier. We can model using an exponential function when the rate of increase or decrease is by a percent per period of time. Here are some examples. Something increases or decreases at a rate of 4% per year. Something increases or decreases 3.5% each month. Something increases or decreases by 2% per minute. Whenever our rate of change is by a percentage for every minute, year, month, week, decade, or whatever the period of time is, we can model using an exponential function. Let's take a look at some examples. In our first exercise, a town has a population of 18,000 people. The population grows at a rate of 2.5% every year. We want to write a function that represents this scenario. Notice that the rate of change, the rate of growth, is by a percentage every year. Because the rate of growth is by a percentage every year, we have an exponential function, y equals a times b to the x. In order to write this function, we need two things. We need to know the a value and the b value. The a value is what you start with. Our starting population was 18,000 people. So, the A value will be 18,000. Next, we need the value for B, which is the factor or multiplier. That comes from the rate of growth. The rate of growth is a 2.5% increase every year. We have 100% of our population, plus 2.5% more, which means we will have 102.5%. We convert that percentage to a decimal, 1.025, by moving the decimal point two places to the left, and we now have our value for b. The factor, or multiplier, is 1.025. Now we can write the equation. y equals a, which is 18,000, times b, which is 1.025, raised to the x power. This is the equation, or function, that we can use to determine the population of the town after x years. And that's exactly what we'll do in the second part of this problem. Part b asks us to use the function to predict the population after 5 years. 5 years means that x is going to be 5. So we use our function, y equals 18,000, times 1.025, and we replace the x with the number 5. Notice that the 5 is now the exponent. We take that expression and we type that directly into our calculator. We come up with a value for y. 20,365.347832. We're asked to round the answer to the nearest whole number. So the population will be 20,365 people in 5 years. I used an exponential function in order to write a model that represents the population and its rate of growth in this town, and then I used that model to predict what the population would be after five years. Here's another example. $2,000 is placed in an account with an annual compound interest rate of 1.2%. We want to write a function to represent this scenario. Notice we have annual compound interest rate of 1.2%. That means that the amount of money is increasing at a rate of 1.2% per year. That's what the word annual means, per year. Since this is an exponential scenario, we'll use the function y equals a times b to the x. We need to determine the value for a and the value for b. Please pause the video here and see if you can write the function that represents this scenario. Let's see how you did. $2,000 is what we start with, so A is 2000. 
B is the rate of growth, or the factor. We're growing at a rate of 1.2% each year. In other words, our money is growing at a rate of 1.2%. So we have 100% plus 1.2% equals 101.2%. We can convert that percent to a decimal, 1.012, and we now have our value for B. That's our factor. We use these numbers to write the function y equals a, which is 2000, times b, which is 1.012, to the x power. And now we have the function that represents the amount of money in this account. In part b, we want to use the function that we just created in order to determine the value of the account after 15 years. Please pause the video here and see if you can determine that amount. Let's see how you did. We want to know the value after 15 years. That means x is 15. We take our function and we substitute 15 in place of x. We take the expression 2000 times 1.012 to the 15 power and we type that directly into our calculator. We come up with a value of y, which is the amount of money in the account after 15 years. The problem says to round to the nearest cent, so the account will be worth $2,391.87 at the end of 15 years. Now let's take a look at a scenario where we have a decrease. A new car is purchased for $42,000. The value of the car depreciates at 14% per year. Write a function to represent this scenario. We see a word that maybe you haven't seen before. The word is depreciates. Depreciates simply means decreases in value. So the car is decreasing in value at a rate of 14% per year. When we decrease by a percentage per period of time, in this case per year, we have an exponential function, y equals a times b to the x. We need to find the value of a and the value of b in order to write the function. a is always what you start with. The car was purchased for $42,000. That was the initial or starting value, so a is 42,000. b is the factor or the multiplier. We decreased at a rate of 14% per year. That means we had 100% and we took 14% away every year, which left us with 86% remaining. The factor will come from 86%. We simply convert it to a decimal, 0 0.86, and now we have the value of b. We use these numbers to write the function, y equals a, which is 42,000, times b, which is 0 0.86, to the x power. We can use this function to determine the value of the car after x years, where x is the number of years that have passed. We will do this very thing in part b, where we're asked to determine the value of the car after 6 years. 6 years means that x is 6, so we'll substitute 6 in place of x in the function. We'll take the piece of the function, the 42,000, times 0 0.86 to the 6, type it directly into our calculator to determine the value of y, which is the value of the car after 6 years. We have to be careful and make sure that we round as the problem directs us. This problem says round to the nearest dollar, so the value of the car is $16,992. This last exercise is for you to try. An element with a mass of 768 grams decays at a rate of 18.2% per minute. We want to write a function that represents this scenario. Notice the word decays. Decays simply means decreases. Please pause the video here and see if you can write this function. Let's see how you did. We have an exponential function because we are decreasing at a percentage rate per minute, so our function will be y equals a times b to the x power. We need to determine the value for a and b. a is what you start with. 
Originally, the element had a mass of 768 grams, so 768 is the A. B comes from the rate. We decay at a rate of 18.2% every minute. That means we started with 100% and we took 18.2% away. 81.8% remains. We use that to determine our factor by moving the decimal point two places to the left and the factor is 0 0.818. Now we can write our function. Y equals A, which is 768, times B, which is 0 0.818, to the x power. That's the function that represents this scenario. Part b asks us to use the function to determine how much of the element remains after 20 minutes. This exercise is for you to try. Please pause the video here and come back when you're ready to compare answers. Let's see how you did. We want to know how much of the element remains after 20 minutes. That means x is going to be 20. We take our function and substitute 20 in place of x, and then we evaluate 768 times 0 0.818 to the 20th power. The calculator gives me the value 13.817430 The problem asks us to round to the nearest tenth, so the amount remaining is 13.8 grams. This is everything you need to know to get started modeling with exponential functions. Remember you can learn more about exponential functions in Mr. Dory's Algebra Handbook, available at www.dorypublications.com.